self-monitoring rings are kind of exploding in popularity, which would explain how RingCon, who sponsored this video, managed to raise $4 million on Kickstarter for this, their second generation smart ring. I've been using it for about two weeks, so the fact that it's here in the box is kind of a lie, but it's no fun to do an unboxing if it's not in the box. So, okay, you get the... So you get the RingCon Gen 2, which is packed full of sensors. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but perhaps most importantly for now, is that it is thinner, lighter, and narrower than their last gen by about 25%, about 33%, and about 12% respectively. So wearing it on the recommended finger, which is the index finger, though you can wear it on your middle or your ring finger if you prefer, is I would describe as reasonably comfortable enough. You can see obviously it's a little bulkier than just, you know, my basic wedding band here, but it never bothered me in day-to-day -day use. See, I can close my fingers together and have it not be painful, which is kind of my benchmark for that. What else we got here? Some the documentation, a USB-C cable, braided, nice, no wall wart though, and their charging case, which is actually kind of a big deal. I really like this thing. Instead of having to do some fussy alignment, it's clearly indicated how it goes on. There's two little nubbins on the inside of the ring, which correspond to two little divots here, and boom, you're charging but you won't be doing that very often. I was surprised to see that their claims of about 10 days of battery life on this thing actually held true. I got a nice little notification. Hey, it's probably time for you to charge it. Popped it on the charger and the best part, the charger has another about 150 days worth of battery on board. So you only have to charge this case a couple times a year. That's, that's pretty convenient. You know what else is convenient? not having a subscription. I know, that's probably like a talking point for later after we've, you know, talked about what the ring actually does, but that's a pretty big deal for me. I don't know about you guys, but I have enough subscriptions in my life and I don't need one for the, you know, blood oxygen level monitor that I wear on my finger. Uh, well, oh, let's talk about all the other sensors. In addition to blood oxygen monitoring, RingCon is particularly focused on nailing down undiagnosed cases of sleep apnea. And they say they were the first ring to do that. And they do all of this while staying IP68 waterproof. I did not pay any special attention to this whatsoever over the last couple of weeks and it's alive. So that's all I can really say about that. Oh, wait, no, I can say more. Why don't we pull up the app and have a look at my health? <laughs> It's compatible with both iOS and Android, and RingCon claims that their sleep apnea monitoring was found to be over 90% accurate, which is pretty cool. I did not turn on the sleep apnea monitoring, but Bell, who's been using it for two, three weeks as well, says he did turn it on. Do you have sleep apnea, Bell? I don't. You don't? Hey, congratulations. We'll look at Bell's health first. No abnormalities detected. Well, that's a strong statement, but <laughs> He apparently doesn't have sleep apnea, probably. Let's poke around in my health data, shall we? Day one, October 17th. Hey, good job. 100% activity. Go Linus. Uh, is that good stress? Okay, all right, hey, look at that. Normal, normal stress. Oh, okay, so I'm low stress while I sleep. But before I sleep, my stress is improvable. <laughs> okay, oh, I see. There's like a little, there's like a little arch that shows your range. Yeah, okay, that's fair. It's kind of cool that I can see the spikes for finding out about the power outage, finding out about the setup issues, and then giving my presentation. <laughs> no exercise records available. Time to start exercising. Dude, I am way too lazy and disorganized to be like, I am starting exercise now. This is the type I am doing. Boop, beep, boop, boop, boop. Like, no, man, they get it. AI or something, they gotta figure that out. Now, one area where the RingCon seems to disagree with one of my other smart devices is in sleep. And I have no idea which is more accurate out of the eight sleep mattress topper or the RingCon Gen 2. But it's clear that there are some strong disagreements when we look at data from the same day. They're both kind of on the same page in terms of like when I got into bed and when I got up, but the actual sleep stages are way off. Here's an example. On this day, my mattress says I had a low quality fair night sleep while my ring says my sleep quality was good. Now, RingCon allows you to subjectively rate your sleep and they're gonna use that in order to give you a better evaluation over time. But it's clear that just based on the raw data, there can be disagreements between different smart devices about how exactly things were going. So in summary, I'd say the main pitch here is sleep and health monitoring without a subscription for people who don't wanna wear a watch 
and or don't want to micromanage making sure that their watch is charged and on them whenever they're sleeping. The 10 day battery life was a game changer for me in terms of compliance because a device like this is only as useful as your willingness to be wearing it all the time. And that's something that I think that Rincon has done very well. If you guys enjoyed this video, thank you Rincon for sponsoring this look at the Rincon Gen 2. You guys can check it out at the link down in the video description and make sure that while you're down there, you get subscribed to Short Circuit.